Time Twins, The Water Tower, Chapter 3. Who? Who are you? Stacy knew the moment she said them that the words were lame and cliché, but she couldn't think of anything else to say. It felt as though she were in a scene from a movie, staring at a face which looked so familiar but was the face of a stranger. The girl had the same liquid blue eyes as Stacy herself, with the same pale skin tone and the same blonde hair. The only visible difference between them was that, while Stacy's hair was cut short, barely reaching the nape of her neck, this other girl's hair was down past her shoulders. Her clothes were also similar, though the tank top she wore was dark purple rather than powder blue. Stacy, the girl replied simply. Stacy's eyes went wide. She fell back against the wall as though she'd had the entire breath knocked out of her. She could understand her parents keeping her siblings' existence a secret. To some extent, she could even understand her mother lying about it. But what were the chances that both of them would have ended up with the same name? You can't be. Can't be what? You can't be Stacy. Why not? Stacy too asked defensively. Is there something wrong with my name? No, not really, Stacy replied. It's just, it's... Nervousness overwhelmed her. Just what? She demanded. I'm Stacy, she replied reluctantly. The other girl's eyes went wide. Are you serious? Stacy nodded. You don't want to tell me who you really are, so you're claiming we have the same name, Stacy too surmised. No, that's not it. My name really is Stacy. Who are you really? I could ask you the same question, Stacy shrugged back. Stacy too folded her arms. Prove it. It was Saturday and she didn't exactly carry around her student ID everywhere she went. Stacy wasn't sure what her twin expected of her. This is ridiculous, she muttered. At least we agree on something. No, not that, Stacy replied. After realizing that she only carried her debit card, which was hardly sufficient proof. I mean, it's ridiculous that we would both wind up with the same name. We still haven't proven that yet, her twin responded. And what do you mean, end up with the same name? I don't even know you. That makes two of us. I didn't even realize you existed until you ran into me the other day. Hey, you ran into me. No, you definitely ran into me. No, it was definitely you, Stacy Chill objected. I was running to catch the bus home when you mowed me down. So was I, Stacy protested. I missed my... Both girls fell silent as they each realized that the other was saying the exact same thing. The two of them stared at each other in complete silence for several minutes, each one weighing up her options, swiftly realizing there were few. There was a loud knock at the door. Hey, is anyone in there? Just a minute, Stacy called politely. Well, hurry up, the woman shouted back in an obnoxious volume. My daughter's about to wet herself. Mom! Stacy reached over and unlocked the door, only to be nearly bowled over by a dark-haired five-year-old who made a beeline for the nearest empty stall and locked herself inside. She was followed by a similar middle-aged woman who stopped only long enough to throw them an angry lair, muttering something that sounded like selfish teenagers as she made her way over to stand outside her daughter's stall. The two of them stood in silence for several minutes until the young girl and her mother departed. Unfortunately, no sooner had they done so than another woman entered the bathroom. Perhaps this isn't the place, Stacy suggested at last. Stacy too nodded, and the two of them exited the bathroom. Stacy's house was a two-story red brick building on the corner of two main streets. Despite this, only a handful of cars passed by during the busiest time of day. Thankfully, although it was Saturday, Mum was still not at home. It saved a lot of tedious explanations. Nevertheless, Stacy checked the inside of the house carefully before returning to the doorstep to usher her counterpart inside, where they made their way upstairs to Stacy's bedroom, closing the door behind them. Stacy's bedroom was only moderately larger than the junk room down the hall, though it was scarcely obvious. There was a varnished wooden dresser in the corner next to the door, the mirror of which was cracked down the centre. All three drawers were perpetually open, 
and usually had several items of clothing spilling out at any one time. It was any, anything from t-shirts to bras to pants and skirts scattered all over the floor. The bed, always unmade, stood at the opposite end of the room against the right wall. A desk stood under the window on the opposite wall. An assortment of scattered pens and textbooks sprawled across it. A swivel chair lay upturned on the floor nearby. As they entered the room, Stacy righted the chair, offering it to her counterpart before throwing herself upon the bed, burying her face in her pillow. So, what do you think is going on? Stacy too asked suddenly. Stacy sat up, regarding her counterpart with eyes that were exact same shade of blue. I think our parents secretly raced us in separate parts of the country without telling either one of us about the other's existence. You know, like in the parent trap? Which one? The one with Haley Mills or the one with Loser? Excuse me, Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> the two girls giggled hysterically. Who cares? Stacy replied, trying to control her laughter. It's the same movie. Both girls stared at each other, both of them struggling to keep a straight face. Neither one succeeded. It was only when Stacy realised how ludicrous her suggestion was that she fell silent, followed by her counterpart. What? Where'd you go to school? Here in town. There was no need for Stacy too to specify which school. There was only one. If we'd been going to the same school, shouldn't we have seen each other at school? The counterpart nodded, her mind working over the same contradiction as Stacy's own. If they were both living in the same town, attending the same school, how was it that they hadn't met before now? Hang on, when did you start school here? Last week? Why? Stacy felt like her brain was crawling through treacle. I started school here last week. Weird, Stacy too mumbled. The two of them fell silent once again as both their minds sorted through the same problem at the same sluggish speed. So far, nothing made sense. Stacy turned to look at the clock. It was late afternoon now, and whatever she was doing, her mum was sure to be home soon. Stacy, don't take this the wrong way, but have you also always had that thing? What thing? she asked, turning her back towards Stacy too. She cast her eyes around the room, trying to figure out what the other girl had been referring to. It's nothing you've got, her twin replied, seeing her confusion. I meant that birthmark on the back of your neck. Stacy self-consciously touched the spot in question, a round brown bump at the base of her neck. Yes, of course, it's a birthmark. Why? Is it dangerous in some way? Stacy too shook her head. Not that I know of. It's just... Rising from the chair, she turned her back towards Stacy, pushing aside her long blonde hair like a pale curtain to reveal a small brown birthmark at the base of her own neck. Stacy walked over to her counterpart, tracing the contours with her finger. The spot was the same size, the same shape, and the same colour. Even the texture, raised and slightly bumpy, was completely identical to her own. She shivered as a chill ran through her bones. Whoa, that's creepy. I know, right? Stacy too agreed as she tossed her hair, set it completely back into place. There was a knock at the door. Stacy, are you in there? It's Mum, Stacy whispered urgently. She doesn't know you're here. What do I do? Hide! Stacy, who are you talking to? Stacy too threw herself behind the bed, almost taking the doona cover with her, just as Stacy unlocked the door. Is there someone in here with you? Mum asked, casting her eyes suspiciously around the room. No, Stacy lied carefully. Just me. Are you sure? Mum pressed. Stacy followed her mother's eyes nervously. For an instant, she thought she saw her twin's hand sitting on the bed, but thankfully it vanished before Mum spotted it. There's no one here but me, she said, breathing a secret sigh of relief. Mum smiled a secretive smile, the kind that said, I know you're hiding a boy in your room, but Stacy changed the subject before she could take it any further. Where have you been all day, anyway? I'm sorry I didn't tell you, honey. Just as I was coming from the hairdresser, I ran into an old high school friend, and we went up for coffee. But then coffee turned to lunch, you know how it is.
I would have called, but I left my phone at home because I only expected to be a couple of hours. Oh, okay. Dinner will be around six-ish. That was close, Stacy muttered almost to herself as she closed the door behind her. No kidding, Stacy too replied, emerging from her hiding place. She stretched, rubbing joints which had been squished uncomfortably between the wall and the bed only seconds before. Stacy giggled absurdly. She thinks I have a boy in my room. <laughs> Notice that, Stacy too replied dryly. The question is, what's really going on here? The two girls slumped onto the untidy bed. They were going around in circles. So far, both her parents had denied that they that she even had a sister. Not only that, but both girls appeared to have the exact same birthmark on the exact same part of their bodies. Things were definitely not as they appeared. As her mind puzzled through this most puzzling scenario, Stacy raised her hands to her face, staring at them intently, as if somehow they might provide an answer. She found herself grimacing disgustedly at the small wart on her right thumb. What's so gross? Stacy reluctantly held out her hand so that her new friend could see. You'll never believe this, Stacy too said, holding out her own right hand. Stacy sat up in shock. What the? Excuse me. <laughs> How much do you know about identical twins? Abigail shrugged. They're identical? It was Monday afternoon, as and as usual, Stacy and Abigail were sitting under the shade of that large tree on the opposite side of the oval. Although it was, of course, technically out of bounds, the thick crowd of students on the oval itself obscured them from the view of the playground supervisor. Just as well, because neither one of them was actually wearing their hats, which hung around their necks beating their backs thanks to the strong wind which had unexpectedly whipped up. No, seriously, Stacy replied. Exactly how identical are identical twins? Writing her glasses, which had partially slipped off her nose, Abigail considered for a moment. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> identical twins come from the same egg and are fertilized by the same cell, which is why their DNA is exactly the same. Which means what? It means that, theoretically, everything about them is the same. Stacy sighed deeply. Though in most cases, that isn't true. Say what? Well, take fingerprints, for example. Despite the fact that their DNA is predominantly identical, even identical twins have different fingerprints. What about birthmarks? Well, it's not common, but it does happen. Identical twins can have the same birthmarks, maybe even the same freckles and warts and stuff. That does it, Stacy thought. Stacy is my twin sister. Mum lied to me. What would happen if, say, everything was identical, even the fingerprints? Abigail shook her head. That's impossible. That would never happen. Stacy looked at Abigail in disbelief. She and her twin had spent most of Saturday night and a large portion of Sunday checking everything they could think of. After the war, it had been the freckles on their backs followed by a couple of smaller moles that no one except Stacy's mother and father knew about. And lastly, fingerprints. All were perfect copies. Even some scars which were not caused by genetic factors had proven exactly the same. But she wasn't about to tell her friend that. Humor me. Abigail thought for a moment. Well, assuming that every part of the twins is identical, you'd have... No, don't be ridiculous. It can't happen. Abigail shook. What can't happen? Abigail shook her head. Come on, what is it? Stacy pressed. Well, she said reluctantly, assuming everything, and I do mean everything, was absolutely 100% identical. What you would have is not a twin. What you would have is a... a... a what? She felt as though she was trying to pour a sponge from a block of concrete, but she persisted, eager to know her friend's theory. You'd have a doppelganger, Abigail said at last. A what? A doppelganger, a duplicate, a quantum twin. Stacy still didn't understand. You're saying it would be a copy of the original person, like a clone? Technically, no. A clone is still only a facsimile, an exact copy of the original. 
A doppelganger is no more a copy than you are. You would both be you. So in other words, she's me. I mean, she would be me, right? Just as much as you are, Abigail confirmed. How totally weird. Yes, isn't it? It's a good thing stuff like that can't happen in real life. That's what you think, Stacy thought. Outwardly, she said, Why not? I mean, what's to say it can't? Scientists have theorised the existence of parallel universes, but they've never been able to prove it. What's that got to do with anything? Well, if such a person did exist, you... I mean, she... I mean, your twin... If such a person did exist, she would have to inhabit a universe parallel to our own. If such a place did exist, she certainly wouldn't be able to come here. Why not? Before Abigail could say another word, the bell rang. Almost instantly, the playground and the oval became the schoolyard equivalent to a ghost town. We'd better get to class, she said, rising from her seat. Eager for the answer, Stacy snagged the hem of the dress. Why couldn't she come here? Stacy, please, we've got to get to class. Why, Abby? Why couldn't my twin come here? What's to stop her from leaving her universe and coming to ours? Knowing she wouldn't get away unless she answered the question, Abigail relented. She wouldn't be able to enter our universe without a wormhole, which would require an enormous amount of energy, or else an area of extreme powerful convergence that could conceivably open said gateway. Having been given the answer she thought, sought, sorry, <laughs> Stacy released Abigail, who scuttled hurriedly to class. Stacy herself continued to sit there until long after the second bell had sounded, staring into the sky. Was that the great secret? Was that why no one else seemed to know of Stacy II's existence? Was she not, as Stacy had assumed, her identical twin, but instead a doppelganger from a parallel reality? Abigail's answer to her question seemed to have raised even more than it had answered, making Stacy wish for the day's end so that she could get home and share her findings with her the uh, Stacy. Excuse me again. <laughs> Stacy's laptop flickered to life and she quickly navigated her way to the Google search engine. Her fingers paused over the keyboard. What should I search for? Chase thought hard. How about Parallel universes, she suggested. Stacy quickly typed the search and hit enter. As usual, when she'd returned home, the mother had still been at work. It had been hard enough keeping Chase's existence from her mother over the weekend, let alone now that Stacy was back at school. The first thing she had done upon arriving home was to go upstairs and tell Chase about her friend's theory. Now the two of them were hunkered over Stacy's laptop digging through the internet for any information which would either confirm or refute Abigail's theory. Both girls found themselves face to face with a page full of articles on the subject. According to Google, there were more than 8 million results. We can't search all that, Stacy murmured hopelessly. Try parallel universe theories, Chase suggested. Stacy bent over the keyboard, punched the search into the rocks. Both girls took a deep breath before she hit enter. Less than half a second later, 8 million results had been reduced to 687,000. That's more like it. After several seconds of silent contemplation, she clicked on what seemed to be the simplest option, labelled Parallel Universes for Dummies. Several more seconds of silence followed. There, Chase said at last, pointing at a section of the article labelled Level 3. Stacy read through the paragraph carefully. According to its author, the theory went that every decision we make causes a new self to form, continuing to live his or her life totally oblivious to the presence of its other selves in thousands of other realities. Also, according to the author, these universes continually interact, but remain unaware of each other's existence.
Whistling to herself, she sat back from the computer. So Abigail was right. Chase stretched herself out on the bed. Not entirely. According to that article, one of us shouldn't be here. According to Abigail, one of us shouldn't be here, Stacy reminded her. The two of them sat there for a long moment, each staring into the same blue eyes. The question hung between them, still searching desperately for its answer. That's got to be more. There's got to be more to this, they both said at the same time. Stacy turned back to the computer, ready to begin the search anew. At that particular moment, the phone rang. I'll get it, Chase volunteered. Hold up. No one knows you exist, remember? Oh, yeah. She flopped back down onto the bed. Why don't you check and see what else you can find in the meantime, Stacy suggested. Climbing from the bed, Chase settled herself in front of the computer, her eyes drifting over the page. Satisfied that her counterpart would be okay, Stacy turned to catch the phone before it rang out. Before she could leave the room, however, she froze in place.